equipment with a 25 millimeter mechanical valve in 2012. Four years later, he got a mitral prosthesis thrombosis. He was thrombolized. 2018, again it was thrombosed. Again, he was thrombolized a second time. The third time when he again presented with a third episode of thrombosis, the surgeon changed the valve in 2008 towards December to a second mitral valve with a mechanical valve. During the follow-up, he was noted to have severe mitral paravalvar leak. He had right heart failure. He had pedal edema. He was on multiple diuretics, Coumadin. Next slide. So he, he had features suggestive of heart failure, was weighing 49 kilogram. Next. So he had a, a reticulocyte count, which was slightly higher. He was like being treated for uh, an anemia as well. His bilirubin was marginally elevated. LDH was slightly higher. The predominant problem was heart failure. He had a dilated heart. Next picture. ECG showed sinus rhythm. Next. The echocardiogram showed, this is a, this is a good view, an epical four chamber, which shows a, a large gap on the lateral mitral annulus. If you carefully look on the left ventricle basal lateral wall, it is dyskinetic, aneurysmal, just below the paravalvar leak. The uh, color flow shows the leak from that area. You can appreciate the basal lateral wall dyskinesia. Next picture. So this was, so there was significant pulmonary hypertension with an RV pressure predicted of close to about 90. This was a patient with a mitral paravalvar leak. <coughs> he had a mechanical valve. And then he got it replaced because of mitral valve thrombosis about six years later. The last surgery was done in 2018, December. He was identified to have a severe paravalvar leak. Go to the first frame. Now, uh, uh, with the transesophageal echocardiogram showed the, show the last transesophageal echo. Uh, or Srija, can you describe the TE pictures? Go to the first frame. Is the audio better, John? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Now we are we are showing. Show, can you show the echo live? Echo yeah, big. We can see. Echo. Yeah, we can see that echo. Uh, make the echo bigger. Echo screen bigger. Prabhu, make the echo screen bigger. Li okay. So what you are seeing is the initial recording that was done. So the, you can appreciate the basal portion of the lateral ventricle was not contracting very well. And uh, that was the same region where the mitral paravalvar leak was there. Next picture. So this is the valve, uh, the, f the flow through the valve. There was a higher mitral valve gradient due to the regurgitant volume passing through the mitral prosthesis. So here we are visualizing the leak. We can see some of the torn sutures. Next. So you can, you can appreciate it far better. There is a large defect. Uh, showed, and this is the severe paravalvar leak. Uh, then next, so it was quite lateral, it was close to the left atrial appendage and it, uh, it measured about 15 millimeters. So uh, we actually wanted to do the transeptal puncture uh, on, uh, online, however, uh, since there was a delay, we punctured the septum. Uh, what you are seeing here, camera big, camera big, yeah, well, this was the left atrial pressure when we got, there was a uh, a mean pressure of close to 30 with V waves going to 65 and uh, the red line is the aortic pressures which was around 95 systolic. So there was a quite a substantial uh, uh, mitral regurgitation causing tall V waves. The pulmonary artery pressures were around 80 millimeter systolic when the aorta was about 100 millimeter systolic, around 80 percent pulmonary artery pressures. So then we were, uh, we were interested to know what was the reason for that basal aneurysm? So first, fluoro, fluoro big. Yeah, we, we first confirmed that the leaflets are moving normally. So this was the, the normal uh, bileaflet mobility of the mechanical valve. Then we wanted to see the circumflex territory. Next. So this was a circumflex injection. We can appreciate that the, the, uh, there is a myocardial bridge on the large obtuse marginal. This myocardial freeze it and, and show diastolic and systolic frames. Yeah. Now that is the diastolic frame. The diastolic frame, the, 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 the vessel opens out. Show the next frame. Next, next, next. Okay. In the, during the systole, there is a long squeeze of the OM, OM branch. Next picture. 
next frame so we changed the view and uh, we we looked at the we looked at the uh, om branch again freeze it freeze it and show yeah so in diastole it opens out and in systole it is uh, collapsing and this has possibly left led to a basal lateral infarction next ne ne keep keep going next you can see that it's quite a long myocardial bridge but in diastole it fully opens out and this is resulting in a significant basal lateral left ventricular aneurysm and uh, now strija can you show that image that you got where the basal aneurysm was seen and the leak was seen yeah now see the echocardiogram it is the dyskinetic area exactly around the dyskinetic area was our leak also so the next thing that we did was show the next picture yes yeah this is this is a this is a lavo projection you can appreciate that there is a uh, a, a long myocardial bridge almost across the entire uh, like going across the left av groove uh, go back go back show in dist no no go show the same yeah freeze it during diastole go back 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 yeah in diastole it completely opens out and in systole it collapses we can also appreciate the bulge of that circumflex area uh, caused by the aneurysm next frame so then we did a lv angiogram in order to find out that aneurysm you can see the basal part of the aneurysm freeze it uh, you, you can just yeah next next frame next 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 correct you can see that there is a this is a systolic frame next next fr next frame yeah during this correct freeze it during the systolic frame there is a complete dyskinetic bulge on that basal lateral area so so it's possible that this uh, this area of dyskinesia is causing a stretch on the annulus and probably that might have been the reason for the paravalvular leak z and varakan your thoughts please see yeah this is this is pretty complex because as you can see you have different pathologies you have you know three pathologies you have the leak you have the aneurysm and you have the myocardial bridge uh, obviously the classic treatment for the bridge is, is surgery they have to do surgery to free that coronary artery the aneurysm i don't see a specific nick so that you can you know try to close it percutaneous you know uh, using a device Uh, the, the leak is is the least of the problem to close in the cath lab, so I would just tackle the leak here, and then refer him for surgery so that they can tackle the coronary artery and maybe do something for the aneurysm. Steve, do you have any other Im imaging on this patient? CT, MRI, anything no. prior to even? No. So no, it's just we, this. No, we, we, else we, want to we, comment on this very complex case? Is Alison in the room still? Like struggling to see Alison Cabalfi? so the thing is uh, we don't know the viability of the basal lateral wall uh, wh what is the what is the viability uh, so uh, yeah yeah obviously we we may have to do some viability testing and if there is a viable territory in that lateral wall we can think about an off pump uh, uh, venous graft towards that circumflex territory however whether uh, the basal part of the left ventricle will get revascularized and whether it will get uh, again Yeah, press, yeah, yeah, an improvement in the myocardial function is not very clear. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I think you know uh, you need to uh, assess the viability of this myocardium by gadolinium, uh, maybe uh, MRI, and uh, uh, deal with that. But for right now, one of the acute problems is the paravalvular leak. So at least yeah. if you can eliminate that significant uh, leak. At least the surgeons they can pause and uh, come up with a plan to tackle the coronary artery and the uh, aneurysm. So okay. Yeah. Uh, Shiva. Yes. This is Zaid. Uh, hi, Zaid. Curious. Uh, hi. Uh, very fascinating case. Do you see any echocardiographic finding of this uh, aneurysm? I I showed a I showed in the PowerPoint yeah. presentation there was a basal lateral wall aneurysm, exactly corresponding to that area. Gotcha. And second is I have never seen uh, aneurysm formation secondary to myocardial bridging. Uh, that is to me what's the cause for this uh, uh, aneurysm formation? Because no. myocardial bridge can cause chest pain. You know what I'm saying? But it has not. I have I'm seen it causing a um, aneurysm formation. Okay. Have when you? when we saw the first uh, the 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 basal lateral wall aneurysm, there is a type of an 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 endemic disease that is seen in. patients from asia and africa which is called submitral aneurysm 
which is uh, a, a focal outpouching of the basal portions of the left ventricle along the posterior mitral uh, leaflet base and it causes an aneurysmal bulge of the basal wall of the left ventricle and this is this is known as submitral aneurysm it's commonly reported in countries like africa in asia especially india so we were thinking whether it could be a submitral aneurysm because he's a very young 29 year old person with no coronary atherosclerotic risk factors he never had Samir, a coronary yes yeah uh, we uh, samir uh, do you want to make a comment is samir here yeah you make a comment on this you guys are in adult cardiology you must see this uh, quite often the bridge and the aneurysm you make a comment go back and show the aneur uh, the myocardial bridge yeah run it yeah so let's see the myocardial bridge again one more time please yeah can you there is the picture of the myocardial bridge there was a better picture than this but yeah the previous one the yeah previous no, i think one. if there's no uh, this one this is this is a pretty common phenomenon i feel like if there is not an angina component this part can be left behind uh, for now, and then you just take care of the leak as you are doing. Uh, this is uh, the only times I think this will become something that we really pay a lot of attention to is when there is uh, compression from PA or other structures, and that is causing the bridge. And then it becomes, I think, more of a surgical issue. But for the most part, I think you stay away from this. Don't stent it. Don't put metal in that area. That is probably the best approach. So okay. Steve, I think we're all pretty clear that we should just concentrate on the leak now. This is a big hole. Oh, sh see, just show the same picture again. Show that same uh, leak picture again. Uh, okay, Z, another. Now the question is uh, about the leak. Uh, it was a 15 millimeter leak. Just show the previous uh, 2D, uh, Srija, the previous 2D, uh, the, the 2D picture that you are just like you were showing a short while ago. Uh, just the previous. Yeah, yeah, this is the picture. See, this is, a, this is a leak that was measuring 15 millimeter between those two uh, uh, edges, 15 to 16 millimeter between the two edges, and it was measuring the same on X plane and Y plane. So it, is, it, was, it was more of a circular uh, paravalvar leak, uh, which, was, uh, which, which has got a measurement of between 15 to 16. So what sort of uh, device would you, would you choose? Since the left ventricular, uh, uh, like the entire almost stroke volume is passing uh, through the mitral paravalvular leak into the left atrium causing a very high LA pressure, uh, I was thinking about a relatively sturdy device. We have options of vascular plugs or some of the sturdy, so no, yes. Just wait, let's ask the audience. Yes. So, See what we can use. I, you know, I have two options here. I would use either the Ocnitec PLD rectangular device or the uh, uh, AVP3. Both of them, sh they should do a good job with this uh, with this defect. But probably I would go with the uh, Ocnitec because of the large disc covering a larger uh, surface area. Okay. Uh, okay. Z, Z, the question is, uh, it is a 15 into 15 millimeter, almost a circular. And the largest rectangular PLD device is 18 into, 20, 18 into 10. So it will have a long axis 18 and a short axis 10. So if you are putting an 18 into 10 on a 15 into 15 leak, there will be some sort of edge residual flows. And we have seen, we have used uh, the PLD device uh, on a uh, few patients. And uh, if there is a residual flow uh, due to edge leak, it continues for longer periods of time. It doesn't stop. Uh, since it was completely circular, uh, a rectangular PLD device uh, I did not think was a good option. We looked at the options of square device. See, well, let's let the audience make a few comments. Yes. yes. Hang on. Yes. From the shape of this defect, you think two square shaped Oculotech devices with the waist may fit in nicely? Since it was circular shack, I was not thinking about two devices. See, if it is oval or crescentic, we think about two or three stacking them together. But uh, this was very circular. Uh, yeah. So yeah. when it is circular, then uh, you, you try to think about something like muscular VHD or a PTA mm -hmm. or one of those circular devices. Yeah. In okay. fact, well, yeah, in fact uh, if, if there was a square type large device, I would have chosen. But the square type so diameter stops at 12. There is no yeah. device more than 12. See, but I think Shaq's point was, yeah, I get the idea about the circular lesion, but the overall, let's say, encroachment on the valve, it's likely to be more if you use a single big device than two smaller ones. Is that your point, Shaq? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alan. 
Wha what about a muscular VSD device which will have a 10 millimeter separation between the two? Two discs. Yeah, I, I agree about uh, uh, a device that will be quite uh, uh, rigid because there is a lot of uh, pressure uh, difference and uh, uh, the defect is quite quite large. So, is there a big uh, Ocutec uh, PBL uh, or a muscular VSD? Okay. So now, one of the concern about using a muscular VSD device, if my device is going to squeeze further the circumflex artery, so I, I should be having a circumflex check angiogram when the device is in, and if there is a worsening of the coronary compression, then we probably cannot put a uh, muscular VSD. We may have to take it out and then use some softer device like AVP2. AVP2, a single 22 millimeter device, is I think will fly because uh, because the force of ejection through a large 15 millimeter orifice is quite a lot. But uh, maybe two AVP2 squeeze in together so that they just get entangled there. That may be an option. But the, as a first choice, I was thinking about using a muscular VSD device. With you, Shiva Kumar, I, I think for this 3D image that you showed beautifully, it's circular defect, I think a muscular VSD device should also work in so, this particular case. So what I am what I am taking uh, now is an Occlutec muscular VSD device, so focus on my hand. Uh, the, uh, the advantage of a muscular VSD device against uh, the other competitive brands is that it has got the, uh, the tilting angle. So if, if, I am, if there is a, a mitral paravalvular leak that we are closing with an amplatzer or a life tech or any other muscular VSD device, there will be a tension on the cable, whereas I feel the tension on the cable is going to be very less. So this, I am loading it onto the sheath and then I will do it in now under water. Can, can, we get can, we can you flash? Receive a bit to go back to Frankfurt fairly soon, so if you can perhaps... Uh, 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 actually, uh, the, the, the sheath is already in, so I'll show you the... What sheath are you using, Steve? Just explain, you've done a transeptal puncture and you have what in the left atrium? Is this just a mullein sheath or... Yes, do you have okay, else? okay, don't show, show the next pictures. Next, uh, uh, no, after this. Uh, no, can you show the previous? Uh, go slowly, okay. Next picture. So then what we did was uh, we took a, a sheath on the... Uh, front of the body, this is not actually within the heart, this is on the front of the chest. We wanted to see that we, we actually put an echo navigation on the, uh, the, the tip of my sheath actually is on the paravalvar leak. We oriented the sheath and uh, we found that the, tra the, the place of intratrial septal puncture site, Srija can you put, uh, uh, no we cannot have, we don't have a marker there. So uh, we, we just wanted to see whether the echo navigation site of atrial septal puncture was correlating with the external uh, like the sheath position the next picture the next uh, next fluoro so then we came down we did the septal puncture next and after the septal puncture we entered into the left atrium corresponding to that area of the left ventricular aneurysm the left atrial appendage was also aneurysmal in that area next picture then we took a standard right coronary artery catheter uh, and the right coronary artery catheter, uh, the wire was initially going couple of times towards the left atrial appendage. However, subsequently it dropped into the left ventricle. Next. So after it, okay, this is this is actually I think, uh, in, in fact at this particular time we, we wanted to go live. So then again I recrossed. Next picture. So then this is the uh, catheter. Next. Initially I took a soft non-braided mullein sheath. Next. Next. So this was a, te initially it was a 10 French non-braided mullein, however that was kinking and so now I have put a flexor sheath 10 French. So this is the, this is the position where we are currently in. So uh, echo big, Srija, can you, can you show the echo uh, without the 2D, uh, ah, yeah 2D. So now, now we are having, uh, you know the, the echocardiogram, the sheath is completely seen now through on the echo. I am going okay, to. Can you enlarge Siva? Yeah, can you enlarge the echo picture so we've got your fluoro on the left and a large TOE on the right. We don't need to have uh, two fluoros. Uh, can, can you see actually the, the, the right side of the screen is live fluoro, live echo, and the left side of the screen is uh, fluoro. Both are, uh, this, is a, this is a very large screen and we are showing both sides parallel side okay. by side. Maybe one Very thing, on you, you, you put only this. Uh, take. 
Yeah. Now is it okay? Yeah, that's fine. Go, carry on. Let's. let's okay. So on. so now uh, we are we are trying to approximate the aneurysm. I'm I'm coming progressively higher. So this is a 18 millimeter muscular VSD device. The leaflets are still looking okay. So at this point, I'm planning to open out the yeah, disc. The advantage of the Occlutex uh, tilt, tilting cable is that you know the, it is not offering any tension. Now I will, I will slightly come out. Yeah, see that it is it is reasonably well aligned. Now we are carefully checking. Can you zoom on that valve now? Fluoroscope says whether there is a valve. Mobility is fine. Okay, See, that that's stagger looks staggeringly good for uh, such a huge device and such a huge hole. Yeah. Now, can you, Srija, can you look at the residual leak? I will make a circumflex angiogram now to find out whether the circumflex is getting compromised further. Can you come to AP view? Is this a uh, LCA? Yeah. yeah, we can see you. So the TOE is the thing we're interested in now. So you can just show to us whether there's any residual leak. Okay. Uh, uh, so, like. so now I'm going to do the circumflex angiogram. Let, let, see, but let's just concentrate on the device and just show us, get your echocardiographer to take us a few through a few views of the TOE, so the audience, this is now nicely included. It looks very, very good. Rija, can you show the leaflets nicely? In so the the leaflets, zoom on the leaflets, Rija. Yeah, just rotate. I think the leaflet mobility seems to be okay. Can you check the gradients across the valve now? There's no MR, there's no paravalvular leak. I Nothing think it looks no, very no. good. What do you think, Jack? Sorry, I missed the question. Ziad, can I have a question? Core comment that, look, that looks on very CIVA. good. That looks very good. And circumflex um, angiogram change as well. So, John, can you put a thermo over here? Siva, yes, absolutely fantastic. Do you want us to come back, or can we leave you now after I, this? Case? I'm, I'm going to show you the transmital gradient now, uh, so that you know you can see the catheter gradient between the left ventricle and the uh, left atrium. John question up here so yeah siva yes uh, it looks it, it looks good but i'm, I'm not sure whether the stability with device is quite stable uh, will you consider a bigger device because i think the issue of com of compromising the valve probably is not there with the orientation slightly different away from Make the valve I, i'm a little bit concerned about the movement of the device maybe should we consider a bigger device uh, Just I am I'm worried about a very very large device that will cause more stretch on the circumflex, yeah. but uh, but uh, uh, it seems quite stable to me. There is a complete abolition of the gradient. Uh, the, the, the this is this is the mitral uh, gradient. You feel you see that it is it's reasonably looking okay. The left atrial pressure has come down from 30 to 14, 30 to 14 or 13 maybe. It's quite see, a. Well, I think Steve, I think that looks a great result. Are, are you happy with it? Can if I? You are. I think I'm we'll going to ask you to try and move on and release the device so we can get back to Frankfurt. I, I'm just releasing the valve. The, the question about Warakan uh, talking about possible uh, stability. It looks stable to me. So uh, can you get the same view where the leaflets are nicely seen? So now uh, we are we are going to Srija, You are happy about the valve? Okay. So. So we have released. I'm slightly pulling the the sheet. It looks wonderful, Shiva. That, that's a great demonstration of how to use the, such a big device to treat a parallel leak. Very good. Yep. Okay, uh, Shiva. I think what we'll do is we'll go back to Frankfurt. We'll maybe pop back into you. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To show us anything more from this to clear up, but that's a wonderful case. Thank you very much. And if we Thank go you. over to CVC, great case.